Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Fernando here today with another uh, gaming news video brought to you by the Sheep Taco Man. How's everybody doing today? So let's get on to this news. Today we got a Gamers Com edition of the news because it's very heavy on uh, on the opening night live, the Jeff Kelly show that took place in Germany where they're doing a Gamers Con, Games Con is what it's called. Before I get into any of that, let's get into the GTA Online bonus for this week. And as you can see, this week, the next business is going to be the biker bonus. And it looks like it's going to be a, a monthly thing where every month, it's every, every week this month, is going to be a, a business-focused event. We just had the crate business uh, that we did, and then uh, we had another business uh, before. So we got a couple of business. We got maybe one or two businesses to go. I don't know. We're going to do hangar again. We just did hangar a couple, of, like maybe a month or two ago. So who knows if they'll do hangar, or maybe they'll do... Um, the import export of the cars maybe i don't know what next month will be bunker was the first one and then we had the crates and now we have the mc so there's not that many more businesses left i don't know if heists are going to be about maybe the arcade maybe they'll do a a, a, a bonus on the on the heist i don't think kyle perico will get a boost but we'll see we'll see what happens but anyway this week it's the bikers Combative chaos on two wheels with bonuses for biker business and AC, MC activities, including double rewards on MC sale missions, trip rewards on deadline, and more. So, what do we get? We get, uh, let's see, uh, 2x uh, GTA plus money and RP on biker sale missions. That's your coke business, your meth business, the weed, the counterfeit cash, and the document forgery. All right. And then what else do we got? Uh, set up on the wrong side of the tracks with the biker clubs house and biker business. Uh, so that means your businesses, the locations of the businesses, and the biker clubhouse itself, as long as all, as well as all renovations, are going to be, what is it, forty percent off? Forty percent off, exactly. Some missions are double money in RP. That's always a fan favorite for the community. Everybody um, wait usually waits for when they go double. What's really really worth it? I mean, Coke by itself, I think, is a million. So when you sell it, so it's it's pretty good. And then three times money in RP on clubhouse contracts, MC work, and the MC challenges. All right. And then three times money in RP on the bike service. That's when you get the little bike that comes in in, in in the garage and the guy works on it. And you sell it similar to the auto shop. Though for one reason, mine is bugged because i never seen to have a bike in my in my MC contract ready to sell. So that's going to mean that I'm going to lose out on that money if it doesn't fix itself. I've, I've had that problem for months. I don't know if anybody's had that problem. But since I never really bothered to go into my clubhouse, I never noticed it or never cared for it. But now I do because now it's worth triple. So if it doesn't, the, that bike don't spawn, I'm going to be pissed. But oh, well, what are you going to do? Free rewards for bikers. Corporate ladder isn't the only way to climb up the top. Uh, Pablo Santos, in addition to picking up the ride or die tea for completing an MC mission this week, take a take on a biker business resupply mission or a clubhouse contract before September 6th to receive the Atomic Racing Livery and the D-Class Walton L35. I did see um, Gilly Master's video where he ranted about how the reward system is broken. Sometimes you don't get the rewards. I've had that, like, I have, I don't really don't care much for clothing, so if I get it, great, and if I don't, but I can understand if somebody's, like, a collector of this stuff, because there are people out there who just log in just to get these, because they are, like, a FOMO thing that, uh, that people are used to. I can see how people could get pissed off by not getting these and having to do with Rockstar support, and I can tell you, deal, with my experience with Rockstar support, they're horrible, like, horrible to deal with. So I can understand people not even wanting to like even go to Rockstar support because it's it takes forever just to, just for a stupid clothing item or something like that. They should figure out a better way to give us the stuff, but unfortunately, I don't think Rockstar really cares. So don't expect uh don't expect it to be fixed anytime soon. But it is good that we complain about it. Good thing that Gilly made that video. Uh, premium deluxe showroom. Who cares? Uh, what are those discounts? Hold on. The Pegasi Fagio. No, the Raptor is fifty percent off, and the Western Power Surge is fifty percent, thirty percent off. But other than that, I don't care. Uh, let's see. Test rides. Uh, the Grotty Cheetah. At the casino, we got the Principal Electro. And also, like they said, Deadline is also three uh, times money in RP. That's the one that looks like that uh, movie. I forgot the, the name of the movie. Tron. Tron. That's the that that uh, adversary mode that looks like Tron. So that's I, I played it maybe once, just out of curiosity. It's all right. It's fun. Uh, house premium test ride. So today they're test riding. It's a bike. It's a Shih Tzu Hakuchi Drag, which is pretty good. It's a pretty good bike. And for those people that are welling out on GTA Plus, paying $6 a month, what do you get? 
you're buying not this is a this is a lie you're buying the adonized burgundy pearl and dark holographic chameleon wheel paints you're buying a soft pink pearl chameleon paint job you're buying a fist fury outfit for the female for a female character and a love fist tee and a love fist shirtless shirt for everybody else and you're buying 500k the vinewood car club access and whatever else they give you for six dollars a month discounts you get the biker clubhouse properties, the biker clubhouse upgrades, biker supplies. So, like uh, for business, instead of whatever you're paying, 75, it's gonna be like what? It's 40% is what? 40k? I'm guessing. Uh, biker business properties, all five of them, they're discounted this month. So, if you need wanted to change a location, this is the perfect one to do so. Biker business upgrades and modifications, the deadline outfits. The Western Power Search Bike, the Nagasaki Shinobi, the Grotty Cheetah, the Raptor, the Western Gargoyle, the Apocalypse Future Shop, and Nightmare Death Pack. This is actually a, a, a good bike for the Arena War. So if it's 40% off and all the upgrades too, that's a pretty good deal actually. A gun vent inventory discounts, you get the Machete, the Tactical SMG. If you have GTA Plus, it'll, it'll be 30% off. The Combat Shotgun, the Super Shotgun, the Compact Grenade Launcher, the Micro SMG, the AP Pistol, Heavy Revolver, Tear Gas, Molotovs, and particularly Mines and Armor. But Molotovs are the best because it's the only place you can get the Molotovs at. So, and a, a very good week, especially for the biker sale, for the MC contracts. People love doing those. I know DHC loves doing those. Um, it's my boy. He loves those. He loves him some MC uh, contracts. So, it, it's a good week. Another good week. And I'm hoping that next week's going to be another good week. Though I'm wondering what business it'll be. Like I said, I think that this month is business theme. So, there's, we got one more week to go. So, what do you guys think the business is going to be? Let me know in the comments below. So let's move on to the next thing. We had um, GamesCon. It happened uh, yesterday. And this is Jeff Keighley's show that he's doing in Germany. And this is opening night. So we had a lot of good stuff to go through. But I wanted to mention one thing at the start. And this is this is like, I want to tell you guys right now. I know G everybody wants to play GTA 6. I want to play GTA 6. You know, but I'm willing to wait. Because I want Rockstar to actually put in the work. Because... <laughs> They're not working on anything else, so I'm assuming that all the resources and everything is going to GTA 6. So if they need another year, two years, take your time, fine. I don't need idiots going to gamer shows and doing this crap. Watch this. So this is right after Starfield did their little concert thing uh, to promote the Starfield game, which is coming out next week. So Jeff Kelly is talking about the composer, and this idiot comes up. And this other G idiot comes up. Really now, of course, rightfully so, he gets booed off and then discarded off by security. It's such a special night for so many developers. It's really disappointing to see someone act that way. But we're going to move right off the show. Exactly. It's, it's very disappointing that some idiot GTA fanboy decides to go up on stage and yell, I want to play GTA 6! And cry like a little baby that he can't play it. Dudes, it'll come out. It'll be out 2024, 2025. Just be patient. I'm hoping against hope that it'll be an awesome game. You know, recently I don't have any trust in Rockstar, but since this is the thing that they're pouring all their resources on, I'm hoping and expect. I know I'm not hoping. I'm expecting and I'm demanding that GTA 6 be a damn good game. I know they're gonna milk the hell out of the online part. I just hope that the story's good and it's worth the seven dollars they're gonna ask for. So we'll see about that. We'll find out in a year and a half. But stop doing this crap. Don't be going up on stage. Don't be posting online that you want to play GTA 6. Don't be Oh, uh, don't be showing your fanboy uh, posting on Twitter, for example, posting countdowns. Oh, GTA 6 coming. It's been three years, four years, five years, whatever I've seen on the X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. About people just posting about GTA 6 and then posting supposed leaks that aren't leaks. Posting trailers that aren't trailers. You know, it just looks ridiculous. When Rockstar announces it, it you know, they'll announce it when it's ready. We don't need, do we need to be doing dumb shit like that. For GTA 6. It'll come out when it comes out. And hopefully it's it's the awesome game we all expect and deserve. Because we deserve a good GTA 6. And hopefully we get it. Let me go down this list here. We're not going to watch everything. Because I don't have 3 hours of time to post here. And I don't want to just end up posting uh, the whole gamer show. Let me just go through the run list. So like I said. They did a performance of uh, Starfield using the soundtrack music. Uh, they, they announced Little Nightmares 3. Black Myth Wukong. Killing Four 3. Rebel Moon. Crimson Desert, Payday 3, Assassin's Creed Mirage, Tekken 8, uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. They actually showed a gameplay trailer, like the first mission inside of what looks like the Gulag. And there looks like they're going to break somebody out. Uh, Nightingale, Grand Blue Fantasy, Immortals of Avian, which just came out. 
Zenless Zone Zero, Honkai Star Rail, Lords of Fallen, uh, Sonic Superstars, and the DLC for the Sonic Frontiers game. Uh, let me see. The First Descent, Under the Waves for Solus, Expedition, a Mud Runner game, uh, uh, the Crew Motorfest trailer, CP 2077 Phantom's Liberty. So that's kind of, that's um, Cyberpunk. All right, Stormgate, uh, The Last Epoch, Marble Snap, which came out on PC. Uh, Armor Core Fires of Rubicon, something I, I actually bought the game because it's from From Software, the makers of um, Elden Ring and the Dark Souls games. So they used to, before they used to be famous for those games, they used to make a bunch of Armor Core games. And Fires of Rubicon, the trailers look very nice. So I actually want to try that game out. So I bought it on Xbox and I'm going to be playing that soon because it did come out today. Uh, Warhaven, MK1. Uh, Era History Untold, Diablo 4's new season. That, that game has been getting so much negative reviews and stuff because it's it's been it was disappointing. Like if you if you thought Rockstar fans are mad about uh, GTA Online updates and stuff like that, the Diablo fans and basically the fans of Blizzard in general they they really they've really been pissed off at Blizzard because Diablo 4 is just a grindy mess of a game that they actually did an update where they debuffed almost every character. That you could build in that game. And it pissed a lot of people off. And it just made the game more grindy. And then the ba the battle pass that they have on it. Usually on battle passes like in COD and other games. You buy the battle pass like the season 1. And if you grind it the whole way out. You'll get enough currency to buy the next season. And Diablo 4 has something similar. It's that they don't give you enough currency to buy the next pass. You have to buy more coins to complete the purchase. And the way they have it set up. You have to buy more than you need. So it's just a it's just it's just a ridiculous mess, and also with Overwatch 2, all the complaints that, that Blizzard's had over that game too, where um there's they they took off the uh, the the PVE aspects that the missions that were gonna release on it, they said no we can't do that anymore after promising for so long, and actually that would be the main justification for the two in Overwatch 2, because if you don't do any of that, it's just basically Overwatch 1.5. And they, they went back on that. They're not going to release any more first person, first player stuff. They're not going to release any more missions. They're not, yeah, I, I think they only did a couple of them. I'm not really sure. I don't really play that game. But a lot, there, there's a lot of people that are pissed off at Blizzard. So the, these companies aren't doing their, they aren't doing well to uh, appease their fan base. So let's say Diablo 4, Dustborn, and then Alan Wake 2 announcement. And then end of the show announcements, it was just basically that the game war is going to happen in December. So let's watch a couple of things. Actually, I want to see these three back to back: the Payday, the Assassin's Creed, and the Tekken Eight stuff. So let's go there now. But I don't want to. Hey, what's up, games? Let me, script, let me skip this little announcer from Ice T. But I want to see the gameplay trailer. All right, hold on. I should have had this timed already. But... Okay, that should be there. Nope, that's that's the game before. I really should have planned this out better. Hold on, sorry guys. Okay, this is. So this is the so Payday 3 trailer. I guess Ice T is in Bob somehow. Now, do what you need to do to get ready. I'll see you on the other side. I'm really hoping Payday 3 is, is better than Payday 2. I love Payday 2. The only thing I didn't like about Payday 2 was the game the gunplay. But it looks like it's gonna improve here. The mission design, the heists and stuff like that were excellently done. That's why people kept playing this game. Because the level design, the heist, all the intricacy part you could do in the game it was awesome. It was just the gunplay was a little lacking. The enemies can be spongy at times. But it looks here like the, it looks a lot better. It looks a lot more fun. You know, it, 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 Payday 2, despite that, was still a lot of fun. So hopefully Payday 3 delivers as well. We'll find out in a couple of uh, a couple of weeks, actually. It's not that long. I think it's September 2nd, the release date. We'll find out right now at the end of the trailer. But it looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> you can drop kick now, or they drop kick you now. There it is, Payday 3, coming September 21st, sorry, 21st. So, about what, three weeks. And here's another game I'm interested to see how it's going to turn out. And this is Assassin's Creed Mirage. Like I said, really interested to see how this one turns out, because the last three Assassin's Creed have been really... More grinding than anything, and I'm really tired of grinding games now. I want something that's just straight up, like the old Assassin's Creed were. Like Black Flag. I don't need to have a ship. It doesn't have to be a pirate game, but I want it to be just action-focused and not grindy-focused. So hopefully, they said they're going back to the roots, so hopefully that's true. 
The game looks great so far. I mean, graphically it looks impressive. Yeah, there's a lot of detail in the levels. There's a lot of... Uh, it's very crisp and clean uh, city. I mean, it's looking the part, at least. We'll have to see how it plays. Hopefully they do keep their word. Yeah, sneaking around and just kill That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, flamethrower? Wow, okay. Damn, look at that. Look at that city. Wow. That's impressive. If you could explore all of that, that'll be awesome. October 5th, that's when this game's coming out. And then let me fast forward a little bit to the next trailer that I wanted to see. There you have an assassin. It, it is within, it is within here. I think, let me check. Because there was a, a trailer next to this one that I wanted to play. Let me see, Mirage. Yeah, the Tekken stuff. Let me fast forward a little bit. Well, now I'm joined by so, the one and only Harada san the creator of Tekken. There we go. Okay, so this is Tekken 8. And this is the trailer showed off here. I'll only play a little bit. I won't play the whole trailer, but I want to see this at least. Because this is also an impressive looking game. I'm, I am a big fighting fan. Like, it's mostly Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat that I usually play. But I, I got into Tekken 7. I really like Tekken 7. I played the Tekken before. Wasn't a super big fan until 7. Now I really enjoyed 7. And I'm hoping 8 continues it. And it's looking, graphically it's looking very impressive so far. It looks really good. And that's the one main thing. Tahashi Shishima, he used to be the main character in most of the games. But now he's dead. So now the, the sons need to, are the ones that are inheriting the company. Which is Mishima Industries. And now they have their own like rivalry going on. So that'll be interesting to see how that plays out. A lot of old school characters from back in the day. And here's something that looks like they're doing something similar to Street Fighter. Where Street Fighter has the battle hub. And it looks like Tekken's gonna do something similar. The only thing is I don't like these little like these little me like characters that they decide to incorporate. It doesn't really fit. I don't know. For me it doesn't, I don't know. What I do like is all this customization that they're gonna add to the game. Tekken 7 had it too, but I I think they're gonna build up on that and make it more elaborate. Like, your character can wear all sorts of costumes and clothing and stuff like that, so... If they really go all out and make it much better, then that's going to be a great improvement. And dress your character pretty much however you want. Like, you can have them cosplay as other characters from other games if they do it right. Alright, the only thing I don't like is this me thing that they got going on for the, uh, for their version of the Battle Hub. Tekken 8. It's hard to believe it's eight versions now. January 26, 2024. So next year. So that's awesome to see. And then they got they're gonna have three versions again. I, I'm I might not play it day one, but I'll wait for a sale and then may probably get the ultimate edition. I always end up getting the ultimate edition. I mean Tekken 7, I got it for like $15, and that was the ultimate edition too on the PC. So I really enjoy Tekken 7. Hopefully Tekken 8 continues that tradition. Uh, let's see, was there anything else I want to see? The only other thing I want to see that I want to show off is the Mortal Kombat trailer. Let's do that real quick. So let me see. Fast forward real quick. There was Ed Boon, but I want to see the trailer. So let's go there. So for those people that don't know the story of Mortal Kombat, after 11, Liu Kang took over um, the hourglass from uh, Kronika. So he's reconstructing a, a new timeline based on everybody like from the past. So a lot of stories have changed. Every, everything's different. Everybody has a different backstory now. Like for example, this is General Shao. It's not Shao Khan. He's not a Khan in, of, of Earthrealm. I don't think there's a uh, um, of Netherworld. No, not Netherworld. What am I saying? Outworld. Thank you. I'm all confused. 
Pierce and Dell and Shao aren't married or anything. They're not a couple yet. Or if they're going to be at all. Probably not, considering Liu Kang is the one doing this. Here's Sindel. Looking pretty awesome. And she's a good guy in this game. Like, for the most part, she's been portrayed as an evil character. But here, she's like uh, benevolent. And Motaro, there's Motaro. He's pretty cool. He's from MK3. <laughs> Just a simple punch. And in this timeline, I think Jared, the husband of Sindel, passed away. He wasn't assassinated. So Sindel's currently running things, and then Kitana and Manila are actually blood sisters. Melina's not a, a clone. And like I said, Shao is a general, he's not Khan. I don't think there is a Khan in that world now. Because he hasn't, he didn't, he didn't, um, he didn't, uh, what's it called, go to war with the rest of Outworld. And now here Raiden, Raiden much younger looking, he is now the champion of Earth. Picked by Liu Kang. And it's funny, he still retains all his lightning powers. We will destroy your champion, Liu Kang. He will taste no victory. And the gameplay looks pretty good. I mean, there's, it's, it's a little floaty. I tried the beta. It is a little floaty, but that's good because you can combo and jiggle somebody all the way in the air for a long period of time. It's actually fun to do. I mean, if you get caught in the combo, that's your fault. And this, that's a character. I thought it was Shang Tsung, but that's not Shang Tsung. I forgot his name, but he's from the from the 3D era of Mortal Kombat games that I never really played. So I don't. Uh, some of these characters that are coming from that era, I'm not gonna recognize like this guy. But like I said, when I first saw it, I thought it was Shang Tsung because he has the beard, he has the face. But it's not him. He's gonna be DLC later on. There's Motaro. He's got now. He's got, he, like the other thing about the cameos, they have different powers. They don't have just. It's not just one assist attack that they jump in. They have several assist attacks, and including the X-ray attack, which this one is painful to watch if you're a man. And you'll see right now. Hopefully, I don't get in trouble for this. The the splits that Sido makes. I'm like, ooh, that's that's painful to watch. And we'll leave it off there because I don't think I, I don't think I'm gonna risk the finisher because it's pretty brutal. Let's just say that Xiao won't be clapping anytime soon. He's gonna lose a he's gonna lose a lot. Actually, he's gonna lose more than his hands. He's gonna lose everything. So it's a pretty brutal fatality, and I, I will show it here because I know it, it might get me in trouble. So that's uh, that was GameCon uh, point. Uh, that was opening night. So that was fun to see all those trailers and stuff. And I hope they keep doing stuff like this because this is also fun to see, especially with the death of E3. You know, the, these kind of shows are always awesome to highlight, like, things that are coming up. And this is all this year. I, there's rarely any stuff that, that's announced from beyond 2024. Like, most of the stuff is going to either release this year or near um, the beginning of 2024. So that's good to see. So, all right, let's jump into some more news. Uh, let me open up another browser here. Let's talk about some other announcements that happened at GamesCon while uh, that wasn't in the actual show in the opening night. And that's that uh, Sony has announced the name for their new uh, PlayStation... Uh, handheld device and this is the playstation portable remote player that's what they're going to call it it's not a handheld it's not like a, a, a steam deck or a, or anything like that this is just simply specifically only for remote play so the portal is going to come out and it's going to be they haven't announced the date yet but it's going to be uh, going to costing 199 it's going to have an 8 inch uh, lcd 1080p that displays at 60 hertz so 60 frames per second. Uh, it's going to have touchscreen touchpad. It's going to have impressive performance. Well, it should. It's streaming. It, that, that all depends on your internet. Uh, button setup. Uh, an audio jack for audio. And blah, 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 blah. The thing about the three audio jack, it's going to have an audio jack, but it's not going to have Bluetooth, which is kind of disappointing because you can't connect any of your, your, your Bluetooth audio devices onto it. So no Bluetooth. I don't know why. Maybe because it might interrupt with the signal with the Wi-Fi and stuff. I'm not sure that that's even possible, but it's an auto mission. And this is what it looks like. So it's going to be pretty, it looks like it's going to be pretty big. Let me, for comparison, let me pull one of my hands those out. So it looks like it's going to be about eight inches. So this is the Steam Deck. This is also like, this, this is like seven inches. So looking at how it looks on the picture there, I'd say it's going to be about this size, more or less. And I'm actually good with the size because uh, the Steam Deck, when I first looked at it, I thought it was going to be kind of too big. 
But I don't know, cause of my, cause of my big man hands, I, I, I actually find it comfortable to grip, and actually comfortable to play. And it's not even that heavy. I mean, it is heavier than if you ever played a Game Boy or the Vita or stuff like that. It is heavy, way heavier compared to those handhelds. But it doesn't really, it's not really that heavy. And I also have, because I'm terrible at spending and I'm a gaming addict, I also bought an ROG Ally, which is the competitor of the Steam Deck. Similar thing, is it's a little smaller, and I think if I'm going to speculate, I'm going to say this is about the size of the, of the PlayStation Portal, or what is it, the PlayStation Portal. It's going to be about this size. And this one has a 120 refresh rate screen. So this one actually could display higher refresh, like uh, FPS on this one. Certain games that do support it, it looks beautiful on the screen. And um, the Ally is like, yeah, it's a little smaller than the Steam Deck. It's still comfortable to play and stuff. I do have a thing on it, too, for protection. So I think this is going to be about the size of that. The only thing is that these guys can play games natively. Like, I can play PC games on this. I can play games on the Steam Deck. You, I can't play any games on the PlayStation on that portable handheld unless I'm connected to a Wi-Fi and unless I, I have the PlayStation Five on, it won't play anything natively, and that's the thing that uh, everybody has an issue with. That and the other thing that people have an issue with is that Sony's gonna do cloud service gaming soon, and this won't be able to play any cloud games, which is a major disappointment because you think you're releasing a handheld, you have support for cloud, but they're saying that it's not going to have support for the cloud gamer. So. I do have an interest in it because I, I, I would have an interest in it. Let me just rephrase it. I would have an interest in it if I didn't have any other handheld. But both of these handhelds, this one and the Steam Deck, they both can download PlayStation Remote Play. And I could play uh, PlayStation Remote Play now on these things. Hell, even if you have like an Android tablet or if you have a, a what's it called, an iPad, you could program the Remote Play on that and you could get a PS5 controller connected to Bluetooth. And you can play your games on there too. So I really don't know what the point of this device is. Since there are already other devices out there in the market that could do it right now. So, I don't know. It might sell well. I don't I don't know how it goes, but we'll see. Uh, let's move on to the next bit of business. So, if you were upset about the Red Dead Redemption port coming to Switch and the PS4, man, do I have more disappointing news for you. If you're also a fan of Konami, especially Metal Gear, they're about to release a Master Collection, which is going to have Metal Gear 1, 2, and 3 onto the mm. PS5, the Xbox, the Switch, and blah, blah, blah. The problem with this is that uh, they some developers had a... Some reporters had a chance to try the game out, and they tried the Switch version, and the Switch version is locked at 30 FPS to 720p, which means it's not going to be... Not even 1080 for the Switch. So... Here, here it is. All platforms except for Switch, 1080p, 60 frames. Okay, so that's like the PS5 and uh, the Xbox. The Switch in dock mode will do 1080p, 30 frames. And the handheld version will do 720p, 30 frames. The thing with the, the Switch version in particular, like these two right here, like the these games were came out during the 360 PS2 era. Those games ran at 60 frames per second. So the Switch is stronger and more powerful than those systems. Why wouldn't it be able to run 60 frames per second on the Switch? Doesn't make sense at all. They're already saying there's not going to be much graphical updates to the game. They're saying that they're not going to bump up the resolution. I mean, even for, for uh, the rest of the system, the PS5 and the Xbox, why are we stuck at 1080p? They're not even going to do 4K. See, right here it says, current gen systems won't run games at 4K. Why not? The systems are more than capable of displaying MGS 1, 2, and 3 at 4K. But for some reason, Konami does not want to put in the work and put these games up so that they look crisper and sharper at 4K. I looked at pictures of MGS 1, the PlayStation game. It looks blurry. Like, it looks really bad compared to uh, 2 and 3. Like, at least 2 and 3 look passably good. But even then, 1080p, come on, guys. Like... You're going to charge me $60, and yeah, it's three games, and these three games, there are a lot of game. there's a lot of game there, I understand that. But $60 for three ports, and they're not even at 4K, when everybody's going 4K these days, they're at 1080p, that's just a terrible port, and I would not eat, I'm a big Metal Gear fan, I love Metal Gear 1, it's my favorite game. I also like Metal Gear 3 and 2, they were all awesome games. And Metal Gear 4, hopefully, that's probably going to be like part 2, because it's at volume 1. The Mass Collection Volume 1, so Volume 2 is going to have Metal Gear 4 and a bunch of other games, probably. But at 1080p, you're just being lazy. This this is sounding like a cash grab. 
Unfortunately, Konami hasn't been doing very well as a gaming company. They've been more concentrated on using their, their gaming licenses, which they have a lot of, into pachinko machines over in Japan, which are very popular over there. But they have, like, they have Metal Gear. The mm. other IPs they have, they have Silent Hill, they have Contra, they have Castlevania. So they've been using their IPs just to whore them out. And this looks like it's just another cash grab from them because they're not putting any work at all to port these games over the next generation system, current generation systems now. But they're not doing the they're not even doing the bare minimum. 4K would be the bare minimum, and they're not even going there. So very disappointing. I was gonna grab this game, but now I don't think I will. At least not at the price they're asking for. Not at sixty dollars. I'll probably wait for a, a a big sale. Not even a just a regular sale. Like I could see be getting it for fifteen dollars down the line, maybe a year or two down the line after release. It's just very disappointing to see. Uh, more disappointing news, unfortunately. Denubo. For those who don't know what Denubo is, it's an anti-piracy program that's implemented into PC games. The problem with Denubo is that it affects performance on games. Like, if you have a Denubo uh, activated game and you're playing it on your PC, it's going to affect performance where you're going to have stutters, you're going to have frame rate drops and stuff like that. And it's attached to Denubo. It's been confirmed. And even though they, they could deny it all they want, but it's been confirmed because that's because several companies down the line, like four or five, six months down the line after release of a game, they'll remove the Denubo because they, they already got their money, so they don't care anymore. So they'll remove the Denubo and then magically, oh my God, suddenly the game performs very well. Hmm, I wonder why. Suddenly you remove the Denubo and suddenly all those frame skips and all those stutters and stuff like that, all of a sudden they're gone. Gee, interesting how that happened. Now, the bad news that's going on now is the new one is going to be is registered now as an authorized Switch middleware, which means it's possible now that some Switch games are going to release with the new in them. And already the Switch has problems with performance, especially the last this, this year's versions of games like Bayonetta 3 had performance issues. The last Pokemon games, I forgot what their names were, the last Pokemon games had very bad performance issues. Now, add the new to that, and if it makes games run worse, it's just going to be a problem. Um, so I, I understand why Nintendo's doing it. The Switch is highly, highly pirated. You could run Switch games on the Steam Deck for crying out loud if you know what you're doing. I mean, it's not an easy process. I haven't been able to do it, but it's 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 a process that's possible with a modded Switch and stuff. But it, Nintendo's not happy about that because they're afraid of ROM dumps and then people just downloading the game and playing it on their, on their Steam Deck. People that do it the right way first buy the game, all right? They first buy a game, they'll buy a Switch game, they'll dump it into their computer as a backup file, and then they'll dump it on the Steam Deck. That's how normal people usually using emulation do it. But unfortunately, there are those people that just download dumps from the internet and then put it on their Steam Deck and stuff and play it that way. So I can understand it in part. Unfortunately, the thing that I'm upset about is I'm going to be upset that if it's not going to perform well, Games are going to be working worse on the Switch, which, like I said, they are, it already has on this generation, on this year, games that have released that have been bad on performance on the Switch. And the Switch isn't a strong system to begin with. So it's, it's very disappointing here. Let's see how it works out. Let's see when uh, the first game with the new world releases on the Switch. And I'm thinking this is going to be more towards also when the next iteration of the Switch comes out, the new will probably have an even stronger presence there. Because pretty much the Switch, it's been out for seven years now. I mean, it's it's about time when they release a new system out there. So I'm thinking that that's going to be down the line. That the new was going to be even heavier focus then. So like I said, let's see how that goes. Um, and then another announcement from Nintendo. And this is, if you don't know, Charles Martinet. He's been the actor, the voice actor that's portrayed Mario and other Nintendo characters for like a long time. Ever since the N64. Like Super Mario 64. Charles is now moving into a brand new role of Nintendo Ambassador. Mario Ambassador actually. So basically he's going to go around and still do like uh, conventions and stuff like that. He's still going to work with Nintendo. But unfortunately now he's going to back, uh, back off a little bit and not do the voice of Mario anymore. Like, if you saw that on Super Mario movie, he wasn't the voice of Mario, but he did do a cameo where he played, like, a, a friend of Mario's or a, a co-worker of Mario, and it was the Mario voice, basically. And then he also played Mario's dad in the movie. So you can see you can see that his voice is there. You can recognize it right away. And he's done a good job playing in Mario. And, I mean, Mario's not a chatty character to begin with, but whenever he said his "wahoo" or other voices like that, he, that was Charles Martinet. And for those that don't know what he looks like, this is Charles Martinet. He is 67 years old, so I can see him like pulling back and not working as much anymore. But it is an iconic voice, and it, it is very memorable, and he, it, the voice is going to be missed. The next game that's coming out is Super Mario Wonder, 
And that has been confirmed that it's not going to be Martin A doing the Mario voice. It's going to be a new actor. And they're coy about who the actor is who's going to play the voice now. So we'll have to wait and see till the game comes out and see who gets credited for that game. So, hey, Charles Martin A, man, you did a good job, man. I, I loved your Mario voice, and you're going to be missed. But you'll, you're still around, so at least you'll still be doing the gaming conventions and stuff like that. And you're still working with Nintendo, so he'll still be able to use Mario uh, as uh, as a promotional material and stuff like that. So, good for good for him. And hope he enjoys uh, his new position as the Mario ambassador. All right, and one final piece of news that I want to go, and this one's bittersweet. Uh, bitter because a lot of you guys, uh, and me included, to be honest with you, used to watch this guy. Uh, if you don't know who this is, this is JK Gamers. Uh, about 2020, 21, 21, he was a big YouTuber. He almost got to 100k subscribers, but he was a popular guy within the GTA community. He used to be mostly PvP. Uh, every once in a while, he would grind, but mostly he was a PvP player. Uh, he would uh, <laughs> he would get into these rivalries with different um, different content creators, stuff like that. I never really got into the drama side of of his uh, channel, but I did enjoy his. Um, his comedic, his comedic taste. Like he was, he, he would be a funny guy. Unfortunately, you know, we found out later on that he's also a scumbag and an asshole. And the reason was is because he got arrested for um, on April 2020. He got arrested for nine counts of sexual offense against a minor, which is uh, ironic because he'd also call a lot of people pedos in his channel. And little did we know, they would not know that he himself was a damn pedo. And he is finally got on uh, a couple days ago. We found out that he um, he was found guilty, so he's now a convicted pedo. So, uh, the, uh, let's see. John A. Gilliam, 39, was originally charged on April 2021 as part of a long-term investigation by the U.S. Marshal Fugitive Task Force and Bloomington Police Department. He was charged with nine counts of criminal sexual assault on a minor between 13 and 17. That's just disgusting, to be honest with you. Just disgusting. The child tour authorities, the abuse occurred multiple times over two years. Police were able to collect physical evidence of the crime according to a prepared statement from State Attorney General Erica Reynolds. All right, so let's see. Where did it say where the commission? Uh, where is there, where's the commission? Okay, here we go. A McLean County jury returned a guilty verdict convicting Gillian of eight counts. And now because of all the eight counts and all the multiple offenses, He's going to face between 32 and 120 years. Now, that depends on the judge. So the judge is going to be the final decider of how, many, how much time he's going to serve in, in prison for his crimes. Um, I would hope he gets the maximum. Like, it should be a lifetime sentence. I mean, uh, multiple times over two years. Like, he basically ruined this girl's life in two years' time. You know, so I don't know. If, poor girl. I mean, I, my heart goes out to the family and to that, that young lady. Hopefully, um, it doesn't affect her too much. Like, she's able to recoup, get therapy, and hopefully get past this. But I know uh, from from experience, from me working in a hospital and me being um, close to psychiatric patients, I know it affects people dearly when a, a traumatic event happens. And it can mess up your life if you're not careful, if you don't get the right help. So, like I said, bittersweet. I mean, bitter because this asshole ruined the life, and hopefully that person is able to recuperate. But sweet because justice was served. You know, he was found guilty. He's gonna serve at least thirty-two years. Hopefully, a lot more. Hopefully, it's a life sentence. Hopefully, this asshole never gets out. But uh, he's gonna serve at least thirty-two years in prison, and we're never gonna see him again. He's not uh, gonna return to YouTube, even if he gets out. He's old man J.K. He's not gonna be on YouTube, and even if he is, he's just gonna get lambasted and roasted. And but I don't ever expect to see this man again ever. And hopefully, um, nobody else ever does as well. This will be the last time we anybody ever talks about him. Um, to the people that are out there, you know, don't hate on the people that, that used to be friends with him. Like, for example, Mullet Guy, um, Kiwi, other people like that. You know, they didn't know. They weren't involved. They didn't have anything to do with this. Don't send them any hate. This man and this man alone is guilty for his crimes. And he should be the only one that pays for it. And hopefully the community, like, rallies together with the other people involved that didn't have nothing to do with the crime. You know, and not don't show them no hate. Show them support, you know. They were just as shocked as you were to find this news out. And they were just as hurt. And maybe uh, they didn't react right away. Maybe they were hurt right away. Uh, hey, imagine if you found out a friend of yours who you trusted and cared for, suddenly you found out he was a monster. You know, how would it affect you? You know, it, it's, they'll, they, they would feel the same way that you're probably thinking of feeling right now. So don't show them any hate. Just show them support. This asshole is going away for a long time. We'll never see him again. All right, so sorry that it was a downer. I'm sorry about that last one, but it, it needed to be reported. We need to know what's going on. So 
That, and that's where I'm going to leave off everything today. Thank you guys for watching, man. Enjoy. Have a great day gaming. This is a great gaming week for GTA Online. A lot of games coming out this, this end of the, the year. It's going to be a great year. A lot of games are going to come out. It's going to be an awesome time. Hopefully you guys enjoy it too. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.